Our gospel lesson for this day, the season, the season after Pentecost, is found in the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, for nor his disciples, they themselves got into small boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I tell you, you do not seek me because you saw signs, but because you ate some of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts, for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. Therefore they said to him, What are we to do, <clears throat> so that we may accomplish the works of God? Jesus said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him and whom he has sent. So they said to him, What are we to do? What are you doing as a sign, so that we may see and believe you? What are you performing? Our fathers ate man in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them our bread out of heaven to eat. But Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will not be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless us with this word today that we might be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, <laughs> interesting change of events here. We are now in the Gospel of Mark, or jump out of the Gospel of Mark for a few weeks for the month of August and into the Gospel of John, and so I've kind of succumbed, I'm giving in, but that's because these lessons do kind of echo what we learned in last week's lesson about the feeding of the 5,000 and uh, what Jesus wanted to do. That was the lesson that we were, were reading last week. And so John kind of uh, echoes what we learned from Mark, but takes it a little bit to a little different trajectory on it but we learned some of the similar sim, similar types of things with that but with that in mind during the month of august we are asking everyone who comes to worship to bring at least one canned good or more every single sunday with you as a sign of god's love it will make more sense as we go on through this month of august and we look at these bread of life lessons how we are called to be God's hands and feet in the feeding of this world, both literalistically and figuratively through Jesus Christ. So, like I said, lectionary alert, we've left Mark. Uh, today's lesson, as I said, is similar to Mark chapter 6 that we looked at last week, uh, but both follow the story of the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 people. However, today's lesson, the emphasis is on Jesus' remark, I am the bread of life. Not me, Jesus. He's the one saying that. I want to make that clear. Such a remark would not fit into Mark's account, and there's a reason why. Remember, Mark never tells us who Jesus is. Not ever. He shows us who Jesus is by his actions. And so that's why I don't think Mark includes these uh, I am the bread, I am statements. But in Mark, John is a little more forceful. He's more in your face. He just tells you straight out. This is who Jesus is. This is who Jesus claims to be. So let's look at temporal mater and materialistic signs. John, the gospel writer, uses the bread of life lessons in a similar way that Mark uses the miracle stories. So remind yourself again how Mark uses healing stories and miracle stories. Mark wants us to know that there is a distinction between physical cures which are only temporary, and healing. Cures, because they are temporary, are not truly representative of the kingdom of heaven. They're just signs. Healing, however, is a permanent state in one's relationship with God that begins now and is brought to fulfillment in the kingdom to come. So John uses the feeding stories in the exact same way. It's just kind of telling the story using a different Melody, right? John wants us to know that there is a distinction between food, earthly food, temporal food that we eat every day at the kitchen table, 
and heavenly food that Jesus really wants to give us. It's not about materialistic blessings. It's about the feeding that Jesus wants to give us for an eternity. Earthly food, you see, it decays. It goes bad, you can't eat it, or when you do eat it, it goes through you, it provides nourishment for a day, but then it's gone. So the crowd wanted to know from Jesus what he would, that it, it, whether he would be providing them with daily food in the same way that Moses did with the manna. Okay, they expected to choose Jesus to perform the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 every single day. I don't know, maybe they're lazy butts. I'm not sure. But Jesus says that the true man from heaven is him. Not this materialistic blessing. But Jesus is the true blessing upon which we are to feast every single day. And those who feast upon him will always be satisfied. Even if their bellies, even if they go to bed hungry at night, in their bellies. So this lesson serves as a commentary on the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus is explaining what he's doing. The feeding of the 5,000, that's no great shakes. It's just a simple little common everyday miracle. Who cares? It's temporary. It's gone. It's just like physical cures. Oh, I've been physically cured of cancer. Good for you. You're still going to die, right? Jesus wants something permanent for us that nothing, not even death itself, can take from us. He is the thing that he gives of himself to us, that thing that cannot be taken from us. So in this case, it is not clear, if it's not clear yet to you, there's more going on than the mass feeding than meets the eye. And that's what John is trying to do in this lesson for today. Jesus did not come to tend to our materialistic blessings, which is wrong with every single church that talks about this message of the prosperity gospel in the United States of America. They have got the wrong focus. If you are watching churches that are preaching prosperity gospel, turn them off because they do not represent Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ doesn't care about these materialistic blessings like these churches do. Now, it doesn't mean that he's indifferent about your needs. But these materialistic churches have really confused the gospel. They're totally baffled and clueless about what Jesus is trying to preach. Miracles are simply signs that point to a bigger truth. That's all they are. And not everybody's going to get a miracle in their life. So Jesus' food is that which transforms our relationship with God. It's a metaphorical food. It's Jesus himself. We feast on Jesus. So in the Gospel of John, over these next courses, these next few weeks during the month of August, these bread of life lessons are another means of communicating that healing and restoration that God offers to humanity begins with Jesus Christ and is a daily blessing that is given to us day by day. For us Lutherans, guess what? We, we understand it as Holy Communion. And we're receiving this blessing every time we partake of communion. It's not the only way we receive that blessing. But it is a sign of what Jesus is doing in our lives. And he is giving of himself to us beyond that little wafer and a little drop of wine that we partake. There's something more that Jesus is giving to us. It's not just simply think about Jesus. Jesus is actually giving something of significance, of eternal value to us when we partake of this holy meal. The gift of grace through the signs of bread and wine are Jesus' gift to us. What's beyond this bread and wine? Now, Holy Communion, that gift of Jesus to us, doesn't preclude that we should also care for the needy and, the, and should be concerned about the feeding of this world. We still should be concerned about the materialistic needs of this world. Remember, Jesus did feed the 5,000 for the purpose that they were hungry, and if they were going to continue to hear Jesus and what he was trying to preach to them, those things of eternal value, their bellies needed to be fed. And so I am convinced that everything that we need to make sure and guarantee that every human being on this planet has three square meals a day, we've got at our fingertips. The fact that there are people starving to death, guess whose fault that is? It's ours, 
Not God's fault. God has given this world everything it needs to feed every man, woman, and child. We're just greedy, selfish pigs. Some people think they need billions and billions of dollars in order to survive, I guess. Right? So while the gift of reconciliation of God is the primary purpose of Jesus in these bread of life statements, I am the bread of life is what he says. Caring for the materialistic needs of the world is still in God's purview. He still cares for us. God's feeding of the hungry is a sign of his intention to nurture and care for us. And remember, he gives it indiscriminately to everybody so that they might know the love of God. They might hear the word of God. After all, it's impossible to hear about God's love, a sermon about God's love if you're starving to death, right? You're not going to hear that message. So our feasting upon Christ in the Eucharistic meal transforms our lives so we might participate in God's sign of reconciliation for the feeding of the physically hungry in the world. And this is why we bring canned goods today. Because when we take these canned goods and give them into people's homes, bring them to people's homes, they are now a sign of God's love for them. That's what that is. It is a sign in the same way Holy Communion is a sign for us of God's intention to feed us with his love. And in essence, the canned goods that you bring with us over the course of this next month are sacramental in nature. They carry with them the love of Jesus Christ into every single home in which we take them. <laughs> so I'm inviting you, two things, to feast upon the eternal blessing of God this day as we partake of this holy meal. Jesus wants to feed you with himself. And as a result, I'm inviting you, because you've been blessed by God, to give of yourself, your hands, your feet, the food that you've collected this day as a sign of God's love for this world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've made us your hands and your feet in this world. You've blessed us richly. So help us to share the bread of life, Jesus Christ himself, through these simple signs of our canned goods, the food that we offer to, to this world, the materialistic blessings. They may, but let's keep that in place. It's not the purpose, but that's just the means of making sure that people hear about the true bread of life, Jesus Christ himself. Amen.